Okay, so say you've got, you know, two or 10 or 10,000 or however many CSV files uh, that are similar in your directory and you want to put those into a snowflake table and they kind of look like this. If you open one, it looks like that. If you open another one, it kind of looks like that. Or if you open it in, say, uh, an editor, it looks like this. How do you get that data into tables in Snowflake? So in previous episodes, we have looked at direct connections using data frames and pandas and using various other tools. But today, we are going to use staging, which is one of the very best ways that you can get data into Snowflake. I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Python on Snowflake playlist, and we're going to take a look at staging. And we're going to do a very simple staging example. We're going to load some CSV files of the same type and structure, and we're going to load those into our staging, and then, and then we're going to populate those into a Snowflake table. Let's get to it. Interested in more topics like these? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Hey guys, so just like in previous episodes, I'm going to start right from scratch here. We'll start a new file um, in the idle shell here, and we're gonna get going. We're gonna do, do some data loading into Snowflake. And I'm gonna save that as a SF stage. I'll just call it SF underscore stage. And that is in its own folder there with those two files that you saw at the very beginning of the episode here, the two CSV files that are uh, data roles uh, files, and those are going to go into our project database that we've been working on in Snowflake. And so we're going to use that snowflake.connector as SC. Make sure that you uh, do a pip install on that and make sure that you get the one with the square brackets pandas at the end. Um, since that one has the nice uh, utilities for you. And then we'll start a try uh, accept finally block here and I'm gonna uh, create our connection object and I'm just gonna paste in what we've used before. Those uh, variables, those are up at the top uh, out of view, uh, the, the password and everything for my account, uh, but you can put yours in there and make sure to connect to the warehouse database and schema that you wanna use. Uh, since that will make a big difference uh, when you start loading. And then once we have our connection object, we can go ahead and set up our cursor. Uh, we'll call it CS. We'll say CS equals uh, CNN.cursor. That's going to give us a cursor object, which is basically going to do all the heavy lifting today. Um, and then we can give some feedback to the user and say we are connected. Uh, and then once we've got that done, uh, we can do our accept and finally blocks. Uh, for the accept block, we're just going to capture the exception, whatever comes up, and we'll print that out. The finally block, we will uh, print that we're going to disconnect. Um, and then we can do, you know, if, if there's a connection, we'll do a close on that connection. And so we'll do cnn.close and we'll print closed. And so that closed will only print if we actually did close it. Um, if it says disconnecting uh, and it and it doesn't give any feedback, uh, then you know that it was already closed. Uh, and then we can print done and that'll print out no matter what happens. It's going to print done at the end just so we know that the script finished. There's our connection. If we get an exception, we're going to print that out. Uh, we'll print that uh, disconnecting and there's our cnn.close to close that connection object to make sure it gets closed no matter what happens uh, and that sets us up to uh, to go here so what we can do is we can save that and then hit the f5 key and that's going to run this i just want to see if we're going to get anything and make sure that our connection is going to work here uh, there we go. So we got connecting, connected, we're disconnecting, we're closed, and we're done. So we did get a connection. It was closed, and we are ready to rock and roll here. Next, we can go ahead and create the SQL for our uh, stage. So we'll, we'll say uh, create stage, uh, and then we'll give it a name. Uh, we'll just call it my stage for now. 
and this will create a persistent stage uh, if we do not specify that it is temporary um, this is going to create um, a persistent stage so regardless of whether our session here that we've started and we're going to close whether it starts and closes or whatever this is going to make a, a stage just like if you made a table in your database and it was persistent um, then then that table will uh, survive regardless of you know what's happening and so uh, we'll use our cursor and we'll execute that SQL and that's going to create that stage and that's exactly what we want to see there so there's our stage my stage we're going to do that cs.execute and then we'll print stage created at the end of it there uh, just so that we have some feedback in our console there in the idle shell and we'll hit F5 and just make sure that that works so there we go we've got our stage now and we've created our stage stage created and that's exactly what we want to see um, so that makes that staging environment for us and we are good to go now if I hit F5 again uh, you'll notice that now it's going to give us an error that's going to get caught by that exception block and it says hey my stage already exists and so what that means is that that is a persistent stage just as I was talking about um, we can put a drop statement in there so we can drop the persistent stage um, and that will of course it'll delete it and so if I hit F5 there you can see it's gonna connect it connects and then uh, stage is dropped and now that stage no longer exists so that's how a persistent stage works you may want to have a persistent stage in your project it really depends on the situation uh, for today we're going to add that temporary uh, stage in there and that so this is for a staging environment that will last only as long as the session lasts and so the moment that we uh, log out and close our session this stage and all the files and everything are going to be deleted uh, so make sure you don't put anything that you can't get back in there um, and so if I hit F5 uh, you can see we've we've got our stage created message back again and now if I hit it F5 again even though I did not drop the stage you can see the stage was created once again just for our session here we do not get that you know already exists message because we use the temporary uh, keyword there and so if we have a stage what are we going to do well we're going to put some files in that stage and so what we can do next is we can uh, use an SQL statement that is going to get some files and we're going to use the uh, the the put command uh, which is going to take files from your computer uh, and it's going to put those files into the stage on Snowflake and so we're going to use that put command we'll say put file now it's going to be a little different for Linux or for Mac you guys will have to work out your own directory I think you guys will be able to do that uh, for today I'm going to be using a Windows directory which is what you saw at the very beginning of the episode and I'm going to say put file C dev SF stage data roles one dot CSV and then space and then at my stage and what that's going to do is it's going to put that file into the stage that we wanted to uh, to load there when we're done we can go ahead and use our cs.execute SQL command and that is going to execute that using the cursor in snowflake and working with the uh, snowflake connector here that we have uh, the Python connector that is going to take that file and put it in there now I'm gonna copy and paste those two lines just like you saw there because we actually have two two CSV files now you might have a thousand CSV files and you could do you know a for next loop or a for loop um, or something like that and you could uh, you know load a whole ton of files of the same sort of type and structure and that that's really what staging is for I'm only doing two today but you might have a ton and you could you could loop through and do all of those there's many ways to do it um, and so I'm gonna use that cs.execute once again that's gonna load those files in there and that is exactly what we want to see so once those files have been loaded into our stage we need somewhere for that data to go 
And so I'm just going to paste in here a create statement for a new table. I'm going to do a create or replace table data roles. And I'm just going to paste that in for the sake of time here. But you can see I'm going to create or replace the table called data roles. And it has, you know, an ID role attribute. These are all the fields that are in the CSV files. And uh, I've chosen the, the data types that I want there. And so make sure you go and check all of the additional sort of options and things in the documentation uh, because you can do things like format the date and all kinds of things and what kind of encryption and all, all of that kind of stuff that you want to use. Uh, so I'm going to go uh, cs.execute and uh, I'll, I'll put our SQL string in there and then I'm going to uh, do table created as some feedback for the user just so we know that that got created and then we can move on. Let's also go up and put some more feedback right after our data is loaded or uploaded I should say. So there's our data uploaded message. I want to have a message for each of the steps of this here so there we go. So now we've got the data uploaded, uh, we've got a table created and then uh, we've you know we've got everything pretty much ready for us to move forward. Now to get the data into the table we're going to use the copy into statement and that is going to copy data into a table from our stage. Now you'll notice that we we only put from my stage. We're not specifying which files go into the stage because all of the files are assumed to be the same type and the same structure. And so we can see that we are going to uh, copy our data into that my stage. And uh, we're going to add on error equals skip file, which will skip a file that, that gives an error. Uh, you can leave that, uh, that clause off of there if you want. Also, we're going to add the uh, file format. Um, and that's because if you noticed at the very beginning of the video, when we looked at this file in a text editor, we could see that the, um, the text fields actually were surrounded by quotes, which is a format in CSV um, that happens sometimes. And so we're going to add that file format equals field optionally in close by. And then we're going to escape the double quote there inside of the single quotes uh, in order to make sure that we are specifying the field optionally enclosed by. So there's our two files. We've got you know our CSV1 and CSV2. Uh, we could have a thousand CSVs in there if we wanted to. And we've got our stage created and we are using uh, the file format to take care of those text fields. And we can go ahead and uh, put a cs.execute SQL. That's going to execute that statement. And we, we only need to do it once. We don't have to do it for every file because it's assumed that the whole directory or the whole stage, I should say, is going to have the same type in there. Uh, I'll put a connection.commit on there. And then we can give some feedback to the user saying data inserted into table. Of course, once we get our data into our table, we want to query from the table and give some feedback or look at those records in our uh, output window here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a very simple select statement for our SQL. We'll do select star from data roles. And then uh, we'll load this time. We'll, we'll do uh, rex equals cs.execute. So we're going to get the return value on that cs.execute uh, SQL there. And then for each of the entries in, rec in records, we'll print the record. And, and that should give us some feedback. Um, so there we are, we're connected. Um, we've got our stage created. Uh, we're going to load two, two files into the stage. Um, we've got our data uploaded. And then we can create that table or replace that table. Uh, and then we can go ahead and uh, do the copy into statement to put all of that data into the table. And we can, uh, you know, loop through and just take a look at the data that's in there. Now I'll hit F5. Uh, and it looks like I broke it already. There we go. <laughs> need, need a single quote on that 
because I'm not putting it into our parentheses there. So there we go. I'm going to hit F5 and uh, let's just take a look and see this. So we're connected. Oh, there we go. There's our data. So the data is in the table. Um, it was put in. You can see that the date that the uh, ID numbers at the end uh, are actually the ones from the first file by the looks of it and the ones so we did create a key on that table so the the you know the order in which the files are put into the table might not be the order that the files are actually in in the stage or you know alphanumerically sorted or anything like that uh, but they will get in there that looks great that's exactly what we want to see there if we expand that window, you can see it much more clearly here, and you can see that the date time gets in there. Make sure to check out the date time options in, in the documentation. And that is how you can create and use a stage using Python on Snowflake. Need additional resources for your project? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description.